Hi everyone, selecting a research topic could be daunting to many, and to address that issue, we need to understand the relationship between topic selection and research design. The first thing that we have to understand is the difference between conceptual definition and operational definition. In conducting and writing a research, the transition from conceptual definition to operational definition is very crucial. Conceptual definition is the process of formation of ideas, theories, constructs, arguments, claims, etc. And a researcher can conceptualize a research topic by the following steps. First, you have to choose a topic, definitely. For example, hydropower source. Second, write a tentative research question. For example, what is hydropower source? And for you to be able to extensively define your research topic, you can add more variables to your research question. For example, is hydropower source a better alternative than commercial electric source? And the third is you have to look for the answers to your research uh, questions. You have to read empirical research papers, analyze them, synthesize, and look for research gaps. Once you're done with that, you can now formulate your thesis statement. The thesis statement is your conceptualized answer to your tentative research question. For example, hydropower source is a better alternative than commercial electric source because, and then you have to look for three key points. Definitely, the three key points should be coming from the empirical research papers that you have read. Once you have conceptualized your research topic, you can now transition to operationalizing it. Operational definition is the procedure for measuring variables and defining a construct. It is important to run an operational definition because in this way you can verify your conceptualized definition that you did earlier. In a way, your conceptual definition is your hypothesis. Okay, let us now discuss a specific example. Now, coming from your conceptual definition, your topic is hydropower source. This time, based on your library research, then you can now really specify your research topic. So you can change it into hydropower plant. And then, add more variables to your finalized research question. So, for example, what are the perceptions of electrical and structural engineers on the conversion of lamesidem as hydropower plant? So you can see here there are the different uh, specific variables such as first the perception of whom electrical and structural engineers about what the conversion of lamesidem as hydropower plant. Once you have finalized your research question, then you can now choose another uh, research question or you can add more research questions. For example, based on the perception of electrical and structural engineers, what contributes to the possible conversion of lamesidem as hydropower plant? Now, once you have finalized your research questions, you can now choose research design. For, for us to answer our research question, we have to choose quantitative, specifically descriptive statistics. You can survey electrical and structural engineers, get the mean and standard deviation of their perception. Once you have that, then you can answer research question number two. What you can use is qualitative as a research design and specifically interview. So you can interview your participants. You, get, you can interview as many as you can until you get the answers or the answers of your participants reach the qualitative isomorph. And then you analyze, code, and then transcribe and create a thematic analysis. Let's have another example. So let us say your topic is suicide and your research question is what are the causes or what causes suicide? Now to extensively define it, you do library research and then to conceptualize your research topic out of your empirical, uh, the things that you have read from empirical research papers, you can say that more often than not, suicide could be caused by loneliness, stress and depression. Then you are now ready to operationalize it by adding more variables in your finalized research question. So this time you're just not looking into suicide as a whole, you're not just conceptualizing it, but you would like to investigate on suicidal tendencies. And then you can add more or specify your participants, undergraduate students, 
and then you correlate your dependent variable to independent variables such as loneliness, stress, and depression. So your finalized research question could be how does suicidal tendency of undergraduate students correlate to loneliness, stress, and depression? Okay. You can now decide which research design to use. So for us to answer the research question, number one, we have to test the significance. So we have to get the p-value. Now in getting the p-value, we can answer the question, is there a significant relationship? Now, if the p-value says that there is a significant relationship, then we can proceed in doing correlation analysis. Now, the coefficient r will help you to determine the type of relationship, whether it's positive or negative. You can also check the strength of relationship, whether it's weak, moderate, or strong. Now, having all of those data, then you can now verify whether or not your conceptual definition is verifiable or not. So this is an example of correlation analysis. So it, it is clearly, uh, it clearly presents the, the relationship between independent variable to dependent variable. So your predictors and your criterion. So once you have this data, you can now state whether or not your conceptual definition is verifiable or not. Okay. Next example, your topic, poor communicative skills in the workplace. Okay, research question, how could poor communicative skills in the workplace be addressed? So again, you have to conceptualize uh, your research topic first. So let us say, based on your library research, what you have gotten is poor communicative skills in the workplace could be addressed by communicative interventions, trainings, and development. Then you can now transition to operational definition by adding more specific variables to your finalized research question. For example, what are the target communication skills of engineering students for them to be career ready? So you have specified uh, your respondents and then specify your independent and dependent variable. So to answer this question, you can choose a research design such as triangulation for language needs analysis. So the first thing that you have to do is to run the present situation analysis by surveying engineering students. And then later on, the next step is to run the target situation analysis so you can survey licensed and practitioner engineers. Then you can compare and contrast the data that you will get from these uh, two uh, statistical treatment that you use. And then the last part of the triangulation is you have to get the score, the communica communication skills proficiency of your participants or respondents. And then you analyze the data coming from these three uh, results. Okay, next example, poor well-being, research questions, or research question rather, what factor could contribute in addressing poor well-being? So out of the library research, you can conceptualize that. Perceived control could address poor well-being. Now we have to verify our conceptual definition by running operational definition. Again, the next step is for you to add more specific variables in your research question. For example, is there a significant relationship between perceived control and well-being of athletes? So again, we specify your participants or respondents. Then with your finalized research question, you can now choose the research design. So for this one, what we're using is inferential uh, statistics. So first we have to get, or we have to run significant testing, get the p-value if there is a significant relationship between your IV and DV. And if there is, and then you can proceed to the t-test. So in running t-tests, you can now compare and contrast the, the data that you will get from the participants with perceived control versus participants without perceived control. And then you will check the difference of the result and then analyze the relationship to the dependent variable, the criterion, which is well-being. Okay, for the last example, um, to topic academic writing proficiency. And you would like to know what reinforcement could aid academic writing proficiency. 
And let us say out of your library research, you were able to conceptualize that utilization of reinforcement such as optimism bias and inactive learning could aid in academic writing proficiency. So for this one in operational definition, I will be using my recent published paper together with Professor Ben Sal. So our topic is effects of optimism bias and inactive learning to academic writing proficiency. Remember that we have conceptualized it. Then we have to ver verify if this is correct or wrong. So we have specified or add more research questions. So our first research question is, how do the optimism bias and inactive learning affect the Filipino college students' academic basic documentation proficiency? So again, you have here your independent variables, which are OB and EL uh, reinforcement, and our uh, dependent variable is the academic basic documentation proficiency of whom we specify the participant, Filipino college students. Second research question, what are the Filipino college students' perception on the approaches used by the teachers? So we need to compare and contrast. And the third, once we do, we did the compar comparison contrast, we could also answer the question, what could be the best approach to use in teaching academic writing to Filipino college students. Now, once we have fin finalized the research question, then you can now choose the research design. So for us, definitely for us to answer the research question, we need to choose descriptive statistics. So we need to get the mean and standard deviation of the academic writing proficiency scores of the students. And then we can use one-way analysis of variance or ANOVA between subject design. So using this, we can check the difference among the uh, different classes, such as optimism bias, uh, inactive learning, and combined OBEL class. I have given you several examples. And to recap, the topic selection or the process of topic selection into research design is done by the following steps. First, choose a topic, definitely. Second, write a research question your tentative research question, and then look for review of related literature or, and theories to use, and then formulate the thesis statement. The formulation of thesis state, statement is the conceptualization of your research topic. Once you have conceptualized it, then you analyze the relationship among the variables, and then decide the research design to use for it to be able to answer your research question. So this is the reference that I used in the last example. So if you would like to read the details regarding the, our research paper, the link can be seen in the description box below. And to support this channel, kindly hit like, share, and subscribe. Kambatane!